Well, hello, it is Wellness Wednesday over at Access Your True Nature. And today I wanna to talk about uh, the sort of repeat pattern of con con constantly re-traumatizing yourself. If you are always going, oh my gosh, I should have done this, or why didn't I see that coming? And um, a lot of regret around uh, this aspect of, of not trusting your intuition and um, really going back into this perpetuating cycle of choosing the same thing over and over again um, and expecting a different result. So I wanna ask you a question. If you've ever been sort of thinking that you can't believe that you did this again or why do I keep choosing toxic relationships or why do I keep giving this person the benefit of the doubt when I know he's gonna do the same thing that works for him, then this video is for you. And, <coughs> excuse me, I wanna talk about this from the space of betrayal blindness because in retrospect, you might've missed some of the other sides that maybe your partner was lying to you or that you were being betrayed. And it's really important to understand this topic because when we're coming out of toxic relationships, and I speak to women every day that are in this space, and you have to notice that there's a period of time where you have to really start reviewing the whole relationship and, and looking at, oh my gosh, you know, how could I not see that this person had a serious addiction or a gambling problem? How could I not have known that he's been having an affair with his secretary for years? How could I have not seen that, um, you know, this was emotionally or physically abusive and I kept staying in the relationship. So now not only are you dealing with the trauma of being betrayed or um, the trauma of realizing that this person that you were being vulnerable or intimate with was betraying your trust, but you're also carrying this great deal of shame, shame that may, you know, you should have known, you should have left earlier, um, you should have seen the signs and you know, you're in that should have, could have stuff. Hi, Sophia. Hi, Shivani. Hi, Joyce. Welcome to the conversation. Hi, Sandy. Um, hi, Sanjeev. Nice to see you all here. So um, if you have anything that you want to ask me about betrayal blindness or perhaps where you are still in this place of beating yourself up about things that are actually not relevant to you anymore or making yourself wrong, just know that you've done the best that you could with what you've had up until now and that you can turn trauma into dharma. I'm gonna be talking about this again on um, the post-traumatic growth summit, which, which is right up my alley, because I really know that the power of rewiring your nervous system, when you get to the root cause of why you're addicted to the pattern repeat that you're in or the, or, um, the ways that you've been coping that aren't working for you anymore, that you can change it. So just know, um, you know that, that there is a way forward and you just need to know that if you are dealing with the trauma of being betrayed or you're in this place of feeling like you're a horrible person and you're in shame or um, in this place where you're paralyzing yourself, this is where I help to support my clients make the um, integration of what's really going on from the root cause of when you created the pattern. And when you're in a codependent relationship or when you're dependent on another person, um, you know, whether it's a real dependency, such as you need them maybe for financial reasons or um, you need support with growing your children up or maybe it's you know, perceived needs, like dependency needs, like, oh, I need this person to tell me that I'm good enough or smart enough or that I'm still attractive or whatever it is for you. There's a million reasons and justifications why we hold on to this because these needs are so strong when we're looking to somebody else to fill these needs because we, don't, we haven't learned how to fill that within ourselves or to create safety for yourself. And this is where the fear of abandonment or the fear is actually must under the, under the surface thing of, oh, I, you know, I, it, without this relationship, I don't know who I am. And you have to understand too that there are forms of betrayal that happen all the time. I mean, this is the, the used car salesman that sells you a car that, that isn't what he says it is, or somebody pinches something out of your purse, or 
um, steals something. You know, there's those kinds of betrayals, but there's also the understanding that that you know this is core moral values that it's not okay to break into somebody's car and damage your property or take something that's not theirs but i'm talking more about in relationship where there's intimacy um where there is this this trust or this dependency that i love you um you reciprocate and you do right by me and there's this joint re joint agreement that you know we're supposed to be honest in a monogamous relationship if that's what you're choosing and that I'm going to say what I need and vice versa when you're in that type of relationship an intimate dependent relationship where there are strong levels of emotional and uh, logistical ties to another and that could be as I said the breadwinner or you know you're at home as the mom caring for for your children um, and you need your husband to go out and work, there is a strong dependency. And you just need to know that the more dependency there is in relationship, the more likely that that you're going to ignore these red flags or these warning signs where there is betrayal or abuse because the fear of losing that relationship is stronger than the voice that wants you to tell you that you're being harmed or lied to or, um, you know, abuse so the more that you're dependent on that that perpetrator of the betrayal the more power that perpetrator has over you as the victim in this example and you know this is the same concept you that I use for um, other abuses domestic uh, violence or any kind of um, betrayal that you see in the adverse childhood experiences um, where it's unacknowledged and it's undiscussed and it's unchanged for years and you know if you haven't done the ACE uh, test please go ahead um, and take it because it's going to give you a good starting point to start reclaiming your your interdependence that you are full that you are enough just as you are and that anybody that's coming into your life if they're not contributing to growing you if they're not contributing to um, making your life more than it is without them then we really need to to look at what's going on underneath all of this surface level fear and doubt and um, you know self-sabotage and get really honest as to okay you know when did this behavior start or uh, when did you form the belief that you weren't good enough so um, if, if this is making sense, give me some heart, give me some love, um, give me a yes, tell me um, that this is helpful and, and give me some questions uh, so that I can really support you in, in deepening into, into bringing the truth up because it's really important that when you're reviewing any kind of toxic relationship and you're perhaps shaming yourself to say, how could I be so stupid? How could I be so pathetic how could I be so blind to not see that this was an unhealthy person or an unhealthy relationship you have to acknowledge the ways that you might have fallen into a betrayal blindness cycle because essentially you're exploring what is your dependency on this person to love you was it to validate you was it to bring home the bacon and help support you financially um, you know sometimes it's a physical thing like you know maybe you're, you're you're ill or you have a disability and you need this person to physically help you uh, live through life but just know that all these kind of needs are going to suppress your intuition and your instincts that might be telling you to run like hell away from this person that this person shouldn't be talking to you this way um, you know they're obviously doing something nefarious or doing something behind your back and and even though you keep asking for your needs to be met this person just can't hear you and this is where uh, betrayal blindness is going to pull the wall over your eyes and you can only see what's going to keep you safe you're only going to see um, what's going to keep you in that relation so you're always looking for um, proof visible proof as to why the reason you should stay outweigh the reasons why you know you should leave and you know when I'm speaking with my clients in the subject matter of maladaptive patterns childhood wounds um, toxic relationships um, 
I often, you know, hear people say, you know, but I had a really good, good childhood. I had wonderful parents. Um, where did it all go wrong? How did I find myself suddenly in this unhealthy situation or this abusive cycle or toxic stress with someone that's maybe an alcoholic or um, a cheater or somebody that, that, that is gaslighting you all the time? Um, and, and this is where oftentimes, you know, it's always after the fact that we see the infidelity or you look back and you and you remember family members warning you um, and you could and they could see the warning signs and and they were helping you to see it but you kept ignoring it right um, it happened to me with my last ex-husband who was a, a classic a narcissist and that's the reason why it's called betrayal blindness because there's something deeper driving it and and oftentimes it's the fear of loss it's the fear of losing partnership it's about being alone um it's about the state of mind that you're in and and that's where you are in that space where what feeds the betrayal blindment is that you'll do anything to stay in that relationship at all costs and ignore the intuitive messages that are cautioning you and screaming at you to tell you, hey, this is not okay. You know, you're being lied to, you're being betrayed, you're being harmed. Um, it's harming your kids, it's harming everything, um, including a lot of times business businesses and the way that you create money because how you do anything is how you do everything. So, you know, it is it is a place where we put the, the blinders on to the things that are happening. And, and often cause the abuse to perpetuate often a lot of times for weeks months some of my clients have, have endured this kind of treatment um, for years before they actually realize that that they can't carry on this way so just remember that every negative emotion every insecurity that might be exacerbated by another person um, just just also appreciate that sometimes these not so loving people are there to help you to realize how you're cutting yourself off from what you truly want so you know you might say to to your partner that that is going and coming or can't make up their mind where they want you or want something else that and this is where the allowance part comes that your you know their quest to find their own satisfaction unconditionally um, often is going to trigger in you an alignment that's that 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 you've forgotten that you also need and in the process of feeling abandoned or betrayed that's where you can come home and create your own safety and your own stability and that's going to make you a lot nicer um, person to be around and who wouldn't want that so um, you know that that this is just a a little bit where I want you to go today on Wellness Wing Day to look at where are you being unloving, where are you being un, unwell, because you're 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 staying regardless of the red flags um, in a relationship or a job or an aspect of your life that isn't working for you anymore. You know, March is is for me is the month that I'm really going to speak about how you can turn trauma into dharma, um, because you can. And everything that's happened up until this point, even though you might not be able to transform it, um, you you know you can't change what's happened, but you can transform through it. And this is where we can start seeing the perpetrator, um, the person that that did betray you, the person that 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 caused you pain, as a contributor to your growth. And stop being the victim. Stop making them wrong, and just say thank you. I see it. I, I appreciate it for what it is and then you get to choose to walk away or choose to say no so if you haven't listened to my other videos on how to create uh, boundaries with impossible people um, the, how to know the six m key triggers to know if you're being if you're being verbally or emotionally abused because we often don't see that I, I suggest you go and look at look at that listen to those videos on my youtube channel and and also look at the ones on gaslighting because all of these are the subtle arts of manipulation and like a beautiful book that i've read if you haven't i highly recommend it called the subtle art of not giving a fuck remember that a lot of things we take personally are not personal 
okay? It's just an interesting point of view. So ask yourself, is this really true? Is this contributing to your life or is it taken away from the quality and the fulfillment of your life? Is it affecting your health in ways that are, that are, are dangerous to your health? And if they are, sometimes when you're in it, you certainly can't see it when you're in it. But I do know after working with lots and lots of people over the years that how you do anything is how you do everything. And that's my Rover. Where is he barking over there? What's up, Rover? Um, you know, trust your bodies, yes. Trust your bodies, no. Is there something I need to be afraid of? Is there something that I need to move my attention to? When my dogs bark, I need to pay attention. Our bodies are like our dogs or our horses. And, and they are very insistently warning us, telling us when to move away from danger, telling us when to move towards things that are gonna bring pleasure and growth into our lives. And you have to listen. And now the plovers are saying, hey birds, dogs, back off, my eggs are here. You know, nature is communicating with us all the time. Our, the nature of our body is communicating to us all, our, all the time. The cells in our body are communicating with each other all the time. Balance doesn't mean flatline. Okay, if you're flatlining, you're dead. That's where we're numbing down, we're in coping patterns, where we're not fully alive to express our yes and no, our no's. Um, so stay embodied, stay in your body, and let your body move you towards what it most desires because your body is your greatest consciousness facilitator. And the sooner you get your head out the way and you start listening to your deep down, when you start listening to your body, that's when magic starts to happen. And if you need support, you know where I am. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you're a little bit more aware of where you may be in some aspect of betrayal blindness. Um, and and, and the, most, the first step in, in changing this is to recognize that it's there, identify that it's there, and then ask, what's going to move me closer toward changing this? Who's there to support me? What, what tools, what resources do I have that is gonna help me to to stop this pattern repeat of addictive, abusive, traumatic cycles. So that's it for me. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the hearts, Joy, Sandy. Um, I always love these afternoon um, conversations and consciousness, and, and I hope that, they're, that you, you find them um, helpful. If they do, uh, like it, share it, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and, and take the ACE test over at sarahjanefarrell.com. And uh, wherever you, are enjoy the rest of a beautiful wellness Wednesday and remember the power of choice is yours and yours alone so choose it